This is Larry the Barberman. I am at Salon International 2017 with none other than Kevin Luchmund, former artistic director for Tony and Guy, British Men's Hairdresser of the Year 2014, and Kevin is also a finalist in 2017. And I'm here today to interview Kevin to find out about life after Tony and Guy. So thank you for having me, Kevin. Cool, thank you for having me, Larry. Pleasure being here once again, thank as you. always. <laughs> All right, so let's just kick off with what made you leave such a big corporate company like Tony and Guy to go it alone? Yeah, so, you know, I left back in February this year, 2017, and it was more or less like it got to the stage where, you know, in life, I think you start to think about what is it that you want. And I've been with the company for 11 years. I was with them for six years in London, where I reached the level to become an international art director. And I think it was more or less that I had my dreams and my ambitions within the company. I achieved them. And then from that, then I just said to myself, do I either stay, do exactly the same thing? Of course, they could have pushed me in a different direction, but for my personal my own goals, I achieved that all. And then it was just a case to then really just kind of just take that leap of faith and just you know go for it you know cuz i always think to myself i don't want to live thinking what if you know i just rather just do it and just see what happens you know and left in february and then um yeah and then we're here now in Salon international 2017 in october so tell me a lot about life being independent has there been kind of a drop in opportunity or more opportunity um is Life now being independent is very different. Like a lot of people ask me, oh, how's life now? You know, what is it like? Is it good? And I'd say the best way to describe it is just different because <clears throat> now, especially, I don't work for such a massive big corporate company um, and now I'm independent. I have to go out and find those opportunities. And, you know, I think it's like anything being with a company for such a long time. You know, I gained my experience. I made the mistakes. I learned from the mistakes and got the education, you know, not just how to educate on cutting hair on doing shows, it's just the education on how to become a better educator as well. So it's good, it's just different, a lot more challenging, I'd say. Um, there's still pressure, probably a bit more pressure, but the pressure comes down to me, which is good because it's like, everything I do now is for myself. So if I don't, if I don't give it 110%, then that's on me. If I mess up on something, that's on me. I don't have anyone to blame, you know, I got, and then I don't have anyone to just think, oh, do you know what, don't worry about that. Someone else is gonna like worry about that. Like everything I do now from bookings, from liaising with clients, from show work preparation, that all comes down to me. Okay, and do you feel that people treat you differently, that you're not part of a big corporate company or treat you differently in any shape or form? Um, I think now it's probably got its ups and downs. Um, being an independent name now and all I am representing is just myself. Um, luckily where I have, well actually not luckily because I don't believe in luck, you create your own luck, but <clears throat> where I've liaised, met people along my journey, um, obviously got my links, had the experience of doing the other shows and seminars and of course competitions, um, people still respect me in the industry. You know, I'm probably, I probably, I'd say I'm getting more opportunities and a lot more different opportunities, like the opportunities now like um, to judge different um, hairdressing competitions, like I judge the British Hairdressing Awards, to be able to now actually shoot for any different brands. So with photography, I can work with any different brands. And then again, when I do shows, I'm not just subjected to working for one company. So there's a lot more freedom for people that want to invite me to the country to do a show or a seminar. So it's good. Has people treated me differently? Yes and no, but like anything in life, there's always pros and cons. Okay, talking about pros and cons and ups and downs as you just did, what are the ups and downs and what are the pros and the cons yes. of being independent? Yeah, so again, like I said, I mean, everything now especially comes down to me. Like I am a one man band more or less. Like I have people that can help me out if I'm doing shows or if I'm doing shoots, but like I said, everything comes down to me. So if I don't want to wake up in the morning and have a lay in, then I've potentially missed that opportunity to go out and meet with people or write up emails or whatever else like that. So it's kind of everything comes down on me. Um, I have to I have to motivate myself. I have to inspire myself. Obviously through the industry I get inspired, but I have to push myself now. So, you know, I don't have someone on the phone saying, okay, Kevin, you have to do this, Kevin, you have to do that. It's like everything comes down to me. Um, cons wise, I suppose, 
yeah, it's not working with the team. You know, and we spoke about that briefly early on. It's, I don't, no one has my back. The only one that has my back really is myself. I have people, like, like I said, that I can call on and people that I can rely on. And of course, like I know a lot of people in the industry, so if I did need something, then I'm sure I could reach out to someone. But, you know, it's kind of, I don't really have anyone to bounce ideas off, which is if I have something in my head and like my head's always going crazy, like 100 miles per hour, and it's like, I don't really ever have anyone say, oh, I've got this really cool idea, or like, I want to shoot this guy like this, or I want to do this haircut like that. I tell myself it, but I don't have anyone saying, yeah, yeah, that's a cool idea, or like, oh, what about doing this? That's a bit like Donald Trump when he was singing, I'm all by myself. Exactly, <laughs> literally. Yeah, literally. Me, myself and I. So, yet again, you're a finalist for the British Hairdressing Award in 2017. You've been in this position quite a number of times. What does it mean to you on this particular year? Um, this particular year, it does actually mean a great deal because it was the first year that I've entered being a solo individual and a solo artist and working for myself and you know, not having the support of people from a big corporate brand. And the thing is, it's, um, it's been good. Like, it's, it's been challenging um, to do the actual shoot itself. It was something that I didn't really intend to do. It was just my friends that I cut um, and then decided to shoot them afterwards. But I think, you know, what it means to me this year, it means a lot because it's all my work. It is Kevin Lutchman from Kevin Lutchman. It's not Kevin Lutchman from another brand or another brand from Kevin Lutchman. It's like, and to achieve something like that, especially for the British Hairdressing Awards, it's like, I'm not going to say it's unheard of because I'm sure it's been done, but, you know, like I tell people like, I don't spend no money for my collection shoots. They think I'm crazy. And I'm like, well, I know people spend five, 10, 20,000 pounds on a BHA shoot. I just cut my friend's hair and I just want to take a beautiful image. And that's what I've done. And to me, it means a lot because this year, especially, it's like when I found out that I got through, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm still in the game. You know, I still got it, even though I don't work for a company. It kind of gave me that reassurance that like, yeah, you, you can do everything you need to do yourself. And, you know, when I got through, I decided that I just bought a table, like for the actual, like the night in the venue, I bought a table. And on that table is um, my mum and dad's coming, my girlfriend's. My best mate who sells cars, his girlfriend who's a stylist, um, I've got one of my other best friends who's a tyre boxer, and then I've got um, Sheriff Mehmet who's helped me out a lot since I've left. Um, obviously, uh, you know he's given me a lot of guidance, so you know I've got to give him a little shout out from obviously MB Barbers, his wife, and that's it, and then me. Yeah. So you've just literally from start to finish with this particular entry, it's just been totally unconventional because ordinarily you might have a potential sponsor or mm -hmm. someone like that who can help you within the industry but you've just kept the whole thing real and organic. Exactly and the people that's coming are nothing to do with the industry which is great because I want to be surrounded with my friends like on a big night like that especially you know they say it's like the Oscars of the hairdressing world and on a night like that it's who, who else would you want to spend your time with you know, I want to spend time with my close people, with my friends and my family, you know. <clears throat> okay, so in your highly respected in the barbering industry, yet you're entering competitions like Men's Hairdressing Awards, what would you say you are, a hairdresser or a barber, in your own words? Um, am I a hairdresser or am I a barber? Um, one thing that I always do say is I'm neither. I'm just someone that cuts hair. And it was funny enough because I remember and when we were sitting the other day, I heard Josh say it. And Josh LaMonica from Men's Spy, you know, huge respect to those guys. They're doing absolutely amazing. And <clears throat> it's not a case of, are we barbers? Are we hairdressers? We're people that just cut hair, who want to make people look good. And the thing is, hair is hair at the end of the day. It doesn't matter if it's this long or this short, okay? you're still cutting hair, you're still, that is the technique that you're doing. It doesn't matter if you're working with clippers, it doesn't matter if you're working with scissors. They're just the tools and the instruments that you use behind using your cutting techniques. So, <clears throat> do I call myself a hairdresser or a barber? Neither. Do I call myself Kevin Lutchman? Yes, I do. You know, that's what I am. You know, I am who I am. I'm out there to cut hair, to make people feel good and just do something creative and just create different styles. Okay. And education, why is it you do, why do you believe education is such a big thing and what are you doing within education yourself? You know, our whole industry is about making people look good. You know, why do people, 
want to go to educational classes? Why do they want to go to shows and seminars like Salon International? It's because they want to learn. And I think that's the great thing about our industry is that it is such a creative industry. There's so many creative minds out there. And there's so many people that, you know, they really want to express their creativity within someone's hair, you know, and that's whether it's a haircut, a color, a hair up, you know, whatever. And, you know, I think it's one of those ones that I think education's needed because there's so much out there that you can learn you know why would you want to just carry on just doing the same thing for like 5 10 20 years if you've been in the hairdressing salon when people say oh yeah i've been hairdressing 25 30 years i don't need to learn yeah but the shit you was doing 20 years ago is completely different to what people are doing now so it's like you have to learn and the thing is <clears throat> you know with myself i've got the experience through barbers i've got the experience through working with such a massive hairdressing company i've got the experience through working with the most talented hair up artists the most talented avant-garde men's hairdressers all of it and the thing is for me is about giving back because i remember when i couldn't do it you know i remember when i struggled i remember when i struggled how to hold a pair of scissors and a comb i remember like i didn't understand i just didn't get it and it frustrates me and it's the same, you know, like I want to give back to the people that actually genuinely do want to learn. You know, if someone really, really wants to learn, I will give them so much more than that someone who can't be bothered. If someone can't be bothered, I'm like, you know what, cool, I'm not going to waste your time any more than you need to waste mine. Let's call it a day. You know, like, and that's what I love to do what I do because it is about inspiring the youth of our industry because they are, you know, the people that's going to be obviously up and coming. You know, and it's just the industry itself, you know, it's amazing. It's there's so many different talented people out there. Why not show our creativity and obviously spread that education through? Do you think just a talent, a highly talented barber or hairdresser makes a good educator? No, it's completely different. I know the most talented hairdressers and barbers out there and they can't educate. I know the most amazing educators out there and they can't cut hair. Like it's, it's a balance and it's a fine line between this and between this. And it's knowing how to actually, one, combine the two together. Because, you know, as you know, Larry, to get up on stage and talk and present and actually do interviews, it's not, it's not, a hard, it's not an easy thing. It's hard. Mm -hmm. And I know full well when people, you know, watch interviews or they watch shows or demonstrations, I know people get bored, you know, because we are creative people. We want to get hands on. We want to be able to do it. Is it a difficult thing to become an educator? Yes, it is. It takes a lot of hard work. It takes a lot of times and it takes a lot of making mistakes. You know, your, your audience, if it's one person, is completely different to how you speak to a thousand people. Your audience, if they've had one year of experience compared to 20 years experience, is completely different. You know, I'm not, I'm not one of these people that I don't bullshit in what I do. I say it how it is in black and white. And I feel fully enough skilled within my craft and in my job um, through men's hairdressing, through barbering, through the education, through learning, that anyone can ask me why am I doing something and I will be able to tell them exactly why I'm doing something. And there's so many people that say what they're doing when they educate. I don't want to know what you're doing. I want to understand what's going on in here. And that's, to me, that's what makes me different. Okay, yeah. And I was just going to ask that because based on what you just said, you're kind of like an extremely talented uh, hairdresser, a person who cuts hair. Sorry, I made a mistake there. Right. You're a talented person who cuts hair. Plus, you're also an educator, and you said that the two things can conflict. So what makes you different? Well, what makes me different is, it is understanding how to do it in a way that people will want to learn and be educated. Because, like I said, I'd say you're probably, obviously don't quote me if the actual, like, you know, the pieces are right, but it's kind of like you need your part of hairdressing and the skill, you need your part of education and your skill of that education, and then you need your actual part of being able to present and actually be on stage. Because the thing is, like I said, I know people that are amazing at presenting and demonstrating on stage, but you look at their haircut and you're like, it's average, it's not bad, it could be better, but people love it because they've gone there to be inspired, to watch the technique, and you know, it's like anything, you know, if you go to, <clears throat> If you go and watch a rock concert or like an R&B artist or a hip hop artist, you know, you listen to like Kanye West or Jay-Z's lyrics and like their songs, you know, you're like this, like on your headphones or like in your car when you're driving. If you go and watch them on stage and they're sitting on a chair and just talking, you're going to be like, and rapping the way that they rap, like, you're going to be like, this is, this is wrong, you know, this is not how it should be. You know, they want to see energy, they want to see pumping. 
But again, it's doing, I always, you know, I think it's, it's like anything, it's like cutting hair. It's about balance as well. It's having that balance and understanding of what is it that you're trying to do. You know, like I said, I know there's some people that take it to the next level. They just do too much flamboyant things. And I'm like, geez, man, people just want to see you cut hair. Why are you doing that? Or they do the most radical things. Just do the most beautiful haircut and the most thing to make that individual look the best that they can. That's all you need to do. Why do you need to fuck about doing this and the other? Like, I, that's what I don't understand. It's like, I, in my head, it's when I educate, who am I educating? I'm, head, I'm educating hairdressers that want to make money. So I will educate them how to understand these shapes that they need to create in order to recreate in their salon so they can get more money so people will come back to them to get their hair cut. I'm not gonna teach them shit that's gonna look absolutely amazing and like really cool in the photo and cool, of course, do that. You know, that's creativity. That will, that's what should come on like <coughs> photo shoots and competitions, you know, really just twist it and just try new different things. But when I educate, I'm educating you how to utilize and use different techniques. That's what makes me different. And in closing, what words of advice could you get give to someone who wanted to follow, follow in your footsteps? Um, I would say, really understand what is it that you want in life and what is it that you want in your career. You know, do you want to be on stage and do these trade shows and be in front of the limelight? If that's what you want to do, cool. If you want to be a better hairdresser and perfect your craft, cool, do that. If you want to make more money, you do that. You need to understand first, what is it that you really want to achieve? And then always say, say set yourself that goal and then literally just go for it. Because it's like anything, it's kind of like if you don't set yourself little goals, how are you ever gonna progress? So, and that's what I personally do, you know. So I said to myself like this year, you know, I wanted to travel to over 10 countries this year when I left Tony Guy, I'd done it. I wanted to become a finance of the Men's British Hairdressing Awards, I'd done it. And, you know, again, like, you know, that's a blessing that I got through to a finalist to be by myself. I got through to the Creative Head um, Men's Hairdresser um, Awards as well. I got through to the RPP Awards. And there's so many different things that I wanted to achieve, which I have achieved. And now, you know, I said to myself, I still want to be at Sound International, still want to do the shows. And I still do that. You know, and it's just setting yourself up like little goals and achieving them. You know, I always say in life, you've got to take baby steps. Don't think just because you're at rock bottom, well not rock bottom, but just because you started, you want to be on that massive stage. Ain't going to happen. Yeah, you literally need to take those baby steps, make your mistakes, do little like smaller like stages, and then you'll be able to get there. But if you have the vision that you want to be up on that big stage, then you're going to be doing it. But, you know, along the way, stay humble, stay true to yourself. You know, I'd say don't chat shit. You know, don't try and like mug people off. You know, don't hate on people because this industry is just about giving love. There's no haters in this industry. If you're a hater, then you need to go and do something else because there's too many people out there that, you know, I find that will help you out, you know, and that will be good to you. But if you shit on them, then that's it, you know. Psh, game over. But yeah, stay humble, stay true to yourself. Keep doing what you love doing, you know, and just try and just be a better person. Okay. Kevin Luchmond, thank you ever so much for that uh, interview. There was great and rich content in there that can help people progress in their career, in the hair cutting industry. We're not gonna say hairdresser or barber, you just cut hair. Thank you for that, I appreciate Pleasure. it. Pleasure, thank you very much, Larry, thank you.